Bookmarked with Lee on Good Morning Bangalore. Welcome to Bookmarked once again. My name is Lee, keeping you company right here. And on the show this morning is Neha Mehta, the founder and CEO of Femtech Partners. Neha, good morning. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good morning, Lee. I have learned few words in Kannada, so I'm going to try okay. that. Please Go for it. don't laugh at me. <laughs> Namaskara, Bangalore. Shubhodaya. <laughs> Namaskara. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh my God. Thank, Thank you. you. That's amazing. Um, you know, I have lived in Bangalore, so I have a strong affinity to the city. Uh, haven't gone back in years, but uh, love the technology, the innovation, and the entrepreneurship that comes from the city. So very excited to be talking to your listeners. Thank you, Lee. I'm so glad you mentioned that as well. Right now, actually, uh, Bangalore is in a little bit rough period. You know, where uh, there's no water, there's it's very very hot. So we're kind of suffering at the moment, but just waiting for some rain and then it should be okay. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I'm but I'm keeping fingers crossed for you. Yeah, yeah. Please do, please do. <laughs> uh, your new book, which is called, uh, you know, um, One Stop, right? Uh, it's out everywhere. Uh, I want to talk to you more about this, and it's all about super apps, as you mentioned. Uh, it's a very, very interesting concept, as you mentioned. You know, I'm reading a little bit about it, and I'm, I'm waiting for to see the book in person. Once I get the book in person, I'm sure I'm gonna love the book, and you know, get into more about this because we are dominated by our phones, right? We have apps for pretty much everything. In fact, we're doing this movie on Zoom, which is another app by itself. You know, it's kind of taken over the entire way we look at life itself. So. Tell me, what did you? How did you go about writing this book? Like, what prompted you to start writing this book called One Stop? Thank you, Dave, for that wonderful question. And also, good to say that uh, you are technologically uh, savvy and driven. Um, the reason I decided to write this book is um, twofold story. I always mm-hmm. say this because one is the the real story, which may be funny, uh, but the other one is more intellectual. So I'm not right. sure which story you want to go with. We will go with both. How about that? Let's do both. <laughs> okay, let's go with the both. Uh, so the first, um, the real story. Uh, this was COVID, and one of my dear friends reached out um, proposing that we do this book together. Mm. So I got to be honest; it was his idea. Okay. And I took it on. We decided to be co-authors for this book, and six months in, he decided to call it quits. It mm. almost felt like a breakup. I was like, "What? Are you leaving me? Am I going to do this on my own?" Because it was just too much, and I never thought of being an author. Right. Not, not in my wildest dreams. Uh, but something I really admire about myself is my spirit to just go on and mm. not. Go on. So I felt I have signed up for this. Now let's see where I can go with it. Right. Right. I continued working, and I I must tell you this was like three year journey, mm. and that's how the second story comes in, which is as I went on doing my research, I found there is no books on super apps. Right. Of course, we come across articles, some publication, but there is no one stop. as we may call it a one stop book just talking about super apps and that was very fascinating for me because i'm a reader first and right. i thought wow there's there's a market gap as we call it in the startup world mm-hmm. and i should be the one solving it so right. i was more dedicated and driven by the project then uh fast forward to now uh, like you said the book is available globally it's published by penguin random house So extremely lucky to be having a publisher which is uh, known globally, and um, as a debut author, I think I could not have asked for more. Um, of course, the copy is coming to you very soon. Yes, yes. And find super apps, uh, like you said, Lee. Uh, there are apps for everything these days. Yeah. And how about the idea of um, just having one app to do everything? Because the mobile space is getting lesser. We don't want to delete something to yeah. download something new onto our phone. But beyond that, I think we are looking at solving all our needs from payments, messaging, dating, uh, ordering food. Mm. Everything is right there. So just to throw some numbers for your audience, WeChat, which pretty much started uh, the concept of super apps mm-hmm. way back in 2011 in China, and that's where the origin of super apps can be uh, traced. They currently have 1.3. billion active users globally wow and they have 3 million mini apps onto their ecosystem whoa <laughs> people spend 84% of their time on these apps which would in turn mean 
around 4.5 average hours every day. Wow, that's a right? lot of screen time. Yeah, so Lee, this is so. Let's say we both decide to go out for dinner. Mm-hmm. I reach out to you on WeChat. We decide, okay, Lee, let's catch up. Yeah. I look for a uh, for a, a place uh, or a restaurant or a beer bar on mm-hmm. WeChat. Make a reservation through that. I call a cab. We both meet there. We mm-hmm. chat, and the Facebook like feature called the Moments is actually inside WeChat itself. We take a picture. We upload it there, and then we pay through WeChat. I go back. I'm still scrolling my WeChat to see what my friends are so saying on those pictures. Everything is right there. I don't yeah. need that, right? So that's the beauty of it. And most of us started our relationship with mobile phones. We're talking yeah. about yeah. a generation which never had desktops. Yeah. And nine out of ten people in Indonesia, which is the world's fourth largest country, have their interaction with mobile phone itself. Nine out of ten people. Wow, yeah. I'm sure it's more in India as well because I mean it's crazy. We we pretty much use it all the time. Like it's part of our body now. We're kind of like cyborgs. Without the without any technology, we're kind of lost. It's crazy, you know. Uh, the thing the smart thing to do to punish somebody is take the take the charger away. Don't give them. Let them have their phone. <laughs> Take the charger away, and you see how they'll panic and be like, "Oh God, one." Are you one of them, Lee? Like, if you want to take revenge, you hide people's charger at work as well. Th- no, I'm good idea. Now I'm gonna do that now from now on in office. <laughs> 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 But you know, you mentioned uh, some several uh, very interesting points, which is this one super app, right? So the whole idea of a super super app is just that you have all these different different apps on this one app, right? How do you think that's uh, changing the way we use the world? Because in India, I don't think, do we have that many super apps in India? What are the main yeah, ones glad, that we can talk about? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. And given that uh, the audience is going to be uh, relating to this conversation, I have covered the story of PhonePay. Mm. Uh, they have the office in uh, Bangalore. I spoke to the co-founder Samir Nigam, mm-hmm. and um, and he was talking about the nexus between super apps and how it actually helps the small medium enterprises. Uh, employees, and then uh, people who are literally underbanked and unbanked, as mm. we call them, because they're not seen by the legacy institutions. Right. So I think that's where the beauty is, because we're looking at two billion people who don't really right. have a bank account, who may not have an ID, a mm. legal document to have any bank relationship. Um, so yeah, but to give an example, it could be Paytm, PhonePay, Tata Neo, Jio. All these are the super apps uh, coming from India. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the Southeast Asian market, it could be Grab. If you go to Singapore, perhaps you have used it. And then there is GoTo, which was earlier called the GoCheck. And from China, it's WeChat, Alipay. Right, right. Uh, and you know, in terms of now, you mentioned that these are good for you know small and medium scale enterprises as well. That's good. It good helps them grow. It helps people get in touch with them. But in the long run, uh, as a consumer, how important or how Uh, dangerous are these apps? Is it good for us? Is it bad for us in the long run? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I wish there was a short answer and a <laughs> yeah. that it's not like that. Uh, I think it's just like life, right? There's good and bad both. Mm. The good. Let's start with the good. Um, so imagine when you're spending so much of your time, the data is being given to a player, mm. and they can play on that data to identify. Okay, Lee works from nine to nine pm, mm. and he comes home late. So probably he's working during these hours. That's why he's asking for the delivery to happen at 9 p.m. Mm. So these are certain uh, assumptions the artificial intelligence or the machine learning can make about you. Okay, mm. so he works uh, long hours. He is gainfully employed, so he could be a good borrower. Of course, when it comes to borrowing money, there's intention to pay and the ability to pay. But they don't. They may not know your intention to pay, but they can st- uh, they can figure out your ability to pay based on right. how much money you're spending. Mm. And then based on that, they can also tell you, "Hey Lee, you might want to buy this new shirt and these new headphones. This might be very good for you. These new pair of glasses, because mm. they exactly know what you are browsing, what you're looking for, what your engagement is. And typically, from a consumer point, if you look at these apps, there's just one feature which is called the stickiness or the pull factor, mm-hmm. because of which we always keep going back to that." Yeah, just yeah. like making payments through one app, you just like using it maybe for messaging. So that's where it starts from, and then they build up on it for cross-selling because they think right. oh, you might like this as well. So I think the possibility of uh, monetizing on that data by giving you personalized offers, discounts, 
mm. and you keep coming back because you feel like you are being seen heard by them and that and the downside of it is also the fact that so much data is being shared you never know what's going to happen because we have yeah. seen rising of data we have also seen one bad experience with one mini app might mean that you might drop the app altogether right Thinking, oh yeah this is shitty i don't want to use it correct right. uh so i think we are playing with such dangerous game that a lot good can come but a lot bad can also come and i had already spoken about the ability to reach the people who are not really banked mm-hmm. uh they are the ones who can use this app without having an id or any document and then build up their digital history their credit history and suddenly the banks can uh, these sorry these players can feel uh, a strong sense of lending money to them because they think or oh, this could be the right person for us for giving mm. the money and trusting they will pay us back right right uh, 